I completed the first test of the 64 kilometer by 64 kilometer one meter spacing equivalent test and the results were actually quite good. So what I'm going to do is outline basically the uh, workflow that I used for obtaining this high resolution static mesh tin based terrain system so that others may use it as well. I want to do some additional testing. I want to try a higher resolution version of the tins and I want to see if I can get the shadows uh, looking a little bit better. Anyway, the basic workflow for doing this was I started off with going into the Mapper Explorer in TerraSculptor 3. In this case, I went with Grand Canyon and I downloaded a 64 kilometer by 64 kilometer I downloaded a 64 kilometer by 64 kilometer region of the Grand Canyon, which ended up taking a few hours to do, but I could just leave the computer to do the download on its own. Then once I got the 64 kilometer region of uh, the Earth downloaded, the next step, of course, was to split it into tiles. And I went with 64 by 64 tiles. with shared edges of course and that took it about four hours for the software to write out about one terabyte of object files i won't do that now but that's essentially what i did here is i created 64 by 64 or a total of 4096 tiles and that was the end of what i needed to use terrasculptor for the next step was I went into Autodesk Max and used the Pro Optimizer to create the tins. Now the uh, main thing to keep in mind with creating tins is you want to exclude the borders or protect the borders of the mesh so that they don't get optimized away. That way you don't end up with cracks or seams within the edges of where the static meshes meet each other. Otherwise, what ends up happening is just sort of like the HLODs that Epic has in Unreal Engine. You end up seeing the cracks in the seams and it looks just absolutely horrible. It's not even usable. So with tins, you want to have the edges so that they match up correctly, polygon to polygon and vertex to vertex. So you want to exclude borders or edges. Now what I did is I did some checks in Max to see what was a good number for creating the optimized tin meshes. And I just went with a 1% because as you can see, looking at the result of doing a 1% optimization where basically you're going from a million vertices per kilometer down to around... 10,000 vertices per kilometer, you actually still have a very nice terrain look. You're not losing a lot of the detail. What I'm going to do in this next video though, is I'm going to try going with probably a 5% optimization so that I'm getting rid of 95% of the vertices to get an even higher detail terrain. Because the 1%, even though it is very good, it still could be a little bit better and I would probably still not lose any performance, which I'm going to get to that in just a minute. But basically in Max, I fired up the Pro Batch Optimizer that they have in here. Right there, the Batch Pro Optimizer. I ran that and had it automatically optimize the entire set of all of the 4096 tiles. And that took over 40 hours for Max to do that. And that's on my uh, R9 5950X 16 core 128 gigabyte RAM system. It took it over 40 hours to perform that optimization. But of course I just left the computer running and uh, I was able to get that completed.
Anyway, we'll go on to the next bit after you've done that in Max, after you've done all the pro-optimizing the tins. Then the next thing that we have to do is to take all of the optimized versions of the tiles, which are actually from a million vertices down to only 10,000 vertices. So they're actually quite small. But the final step is to take all 4,096 of those and drag them into Unreal Engine and actually create the final terrain out of that. So it took me about, I did it in batches of 256 static meshes at a time. Uh, so it took me about an hour to load them all into Unreal Engine. The reason why I did them in batches is I found that the Unreal Engine likes to crash on the object importer if it uses up too much memory. So I did them in batches of 256 at a time so that I wasn't going to get a crash out of the uh, out of the object importer. But anyway, here you can see we've got a 64 kilometer by 64 kilometer landscape created all using tin based static meshes and it's extremely performant like I'm actually really impressed with how well it performs what I did for the texturing on this is I just used a landscape auto material for right now on this one on my previous tests I actually used uh, texture tiles that were um, from street maps and satellite maps. I didn't do that this time just for faster development time because of course that would be 4,096 material instances that I would have to create for the 4,096 static meshes. A person's going to have to probably develop some kind of a plugin or blueprint or something for Unreal Engine that can automatically take 4,096 material instances or actually take 4,096 textures, apply them to 4,096 material instances, and then apply those 4,096 material instances to the 4,096 static meshes. Because doing that manually is going to take a person a few hours for sure to do that. But anyway, what I'll do next is uh, I'm shooting this video at 2560 by uh, 1440 just because the user interfaces are too cramped in these applications at 1920 by 1080. So that's going to be resized down in Premiere. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll now do a test of the, the packaged project. packaged project in uh, Unreal on this same R95950 system. Uh, spoiler alert, I actually get 150 to 180 frames per second with this train system and this is not Nanite. I want to uh, really uh, emphasize that I'm not using Nanite right now. This is just the straight raw static meshes that I've created that are the optimized tins and I end up getting a really nice 150 to 180 frames per second. So now we'll do a little bit of a, we'll do a run in a packaged version of the terrain. Here you can see we've got the terrain rendering this is at 1920 by 1080 on my R9 5950 X 128 gig RX 7800 XT system. And you can see even with me recording the video, I'm getting over 140 frames per second. When I'm not recording the video, I get about 180 frames, 150 to 180 frames per second. And you can see the quality of the terrain is actually quite good. It's really wasteful to use a height map based terrain because you can remove 99% of those vertices from a height map based terrain 
and still have a nice looking terrain to be able to run on at that optimized tin or triangulated irregular network level of mesh. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do a test where I've got five times more detail than this in the meshes so uh, that I'll be going from uh, 10,000 vertices per kilometer up to 50,000 vertices per kilometer and we'll see just what that looks like for detail. I'm expecting it to perform close to the same as what this is performing and if I run into any performance issues with that I'll just use Nanite on it. Uh, so I would expect it to be able to perform just as good as this with or without Nanite at five times the resolution. So it's going to take me uh, about three days to do that. To do the new optimized meshes and such. Uh, and that's going to take up a lot of drive space as well. So I'm going to have to tie up my one computer for a few days to generate the new optimized meshes at the 5% resolution instead of the 1% resolution. And we'll do another test with that. I want to see if I can improve the quality of the shadows on this. I haven't messed with that. And I want to see if possibly I can develop some tools that can be used to make creating the materials much easier. I used an automated tool that I developed to do the mesh tile optimized mesh file name correction because Max uses really weird file name. Well, not really weird. It's understandable what they're doing, but it's annoying. It changes the file name. Uh, so I had to write some software to be able to go through and batch rename the uh, optimized files that Max makes. So that's the nice thing about being a developer is I'll end up creating a bunch of the tools that I need in order to be able to get this system functional. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, remember here, when you're looking at the frames per second on this, I'm actually recording the video using OBS Recorder on this same system. That's why it's got a little bit of a frame hit. I'm still doing like right there, I'm getting 157 frames per second. And this is on a 64 kilometer by 64 kilometer map. And the source height map data is one meter data. So it's optimized tins of one meter data. And I'll try it again here next at a higher resolution and we'll see what kind of frame rate we get. Anyway, thanks for watching.